So I was in Riyadh for an event called Leap, which is a massive event about technology and the future. And it was really interesting to be there to talk about inclusion because as we're headed into the future, I think it's always a good idea to take uh, inclusion with you. I think that will be uh, that'll be where we need to be when it comes to any sort of advancement. So the event was fine, it went well. It was only once I had come back to the airport to head to another destination, which was Laos. I was going to Laos to be part of a study tour arranged by Asia Foundation, as I'm one of their chosen fellows for this year. And I was really excited because I had support from both sides. My organizers in Riyadh were really trying their level best to give me the best accommodation, best travel arrangements. And uh, of course, uh, Nadia from Asia Foundation was also making sure we were going back and forth on email. Everything was fine until I reached the airport to board a flight to Dubai. And from there, I was supposed to go to um, Bangkok and then to Laos. But then suddenly, when I reached the counter, the person at the counter, who was a guy, looked at me and, and the first question they asked was, are you traveling alone? I said, yes, that's exactly how I came into the country alone. And <laughs> that's pretty much how I came into the world as well, alone. And he did not say anything. And that was the biggest red flag right there. Because if someone is not willing to engage in a conversation with you, then they're not looking for a solution. There and then, that's the communication um, thing that you need to follow and I got a little worried but I did not panic because I have a rule that if you panic you've lost it you've lost the game right there and then so do not panic and we also need to retain our energy to use it in the right way because when you're traveling alone the only thing you've got is yourself and you have your own power bank that you need to be very careful on how to utilize so this person was like okay you wait you wait somebody's coming we're going to talk to you and I said, look, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm happy to answer how to fold my wheelchair, how to put it there. I've been traveling before and we can handle this. But this person did not want to engage in a conversation. In fact, asked me really weird questions about how much disabled you are, how many, how much legs do you have? And um, these were a bit uh, difficult to answer, but I have to answer them because I want to be accommodating to the service as well. But to be asked in like a huge hall, where everyone's interested and intrigued and they're already staring at you, that's a bit daunting. Also, I realized I was in Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia only have recently, you know, wrapped their heads around women being independent and coming forth and just, you know, being by themselves and they just allowed women to drive quite recently. So I also felt somewhere the whole idea that a disabled woman is traveling by herself is, is very unique. And it's, it's not a very common thing. So maybe that caused a little panic on the other side as well. But anyways, we, we had to do something about it. So this person would talk to me and I would just keep on chasing this person, you know, with my passport that I need to board. I don't want to miss the flight because I have to head ahead. But this person would not accommodate me and told me that someone else would come and talk to you. And I said, okay, as long as I can be on the flight. And then finally, someone came forth and said that, we cannot board you because you're traveling by yourself and God forbid something happens to you, we are not responsible. I said first and foremost, Alhamdulillah, I have traveled alone by myself, by the will of Allah and his love and support for so many years. And what are you telling me? And secondly, good airlines always tell me that, look, if you need help, we're there for you. They always give me this confidence and that is, that is the confidence you give to every passenger, whether they're old, even if they're a baby, you have that sense of, you know, moral support there for them. And thirdly, God forbid, if something goes wrong, then I will not just help myself, but probably I'll help all the passengers, including the crew and the pilot on the flight. That's the person, that's the leadership I have. And that's the attitude that I have. So it's just a very short flight. We don't have to get into all of this. Let's just go ahead. And they still won't allow me. And something really funny happened. This person who was overhearing the conversation felt a sense of empathy and stepped forward and said, look, I'm on the flight. I'm going to take care of her. And this um, uh, flight crew member, he looked at us and goes like, do you promise to take care of her? I mean, it made it sound so serious. Even I got scared. 
and that person got scared that dude you're making a huge deal out of this and i also understand where they're coming from but this was a bit uh, not needed because it's not the first time i was traveling by myself and i've taken shorter and longer flights before so for some very funny odd reason that person could also not get on the flight because he did not have the way visa and uh, i found this out later on when i was patrolling to find a new ticket and i found him at one of the ticket counters and we had this really interesting i contact and he was like yeah i i also wasn't lucky today i said fine whatever happens happens for good we need to find a solution so long story short i was not allowed to board flight on um, um that aircraft and the flight left i said fine i'm sure there are other airlines but surprisingly this attitude was uh, coming from every airline every local airline uh, i went to two more airlines i tried to get another fl another flight so i don't have to miss my flight from dubai to bangkok because then it would affect my trip but it did not work um every airline was like we can't board you because you're traveling by yourself and i was like dude one i cannot suddenly produce an attendant number two i don't need the attendant number three if you don't let me leave the country If you don't let me board, then at least give me a bed so I can sleep on the airport because you're clearly not letting me leave. I just want to leave the country. Also, this is not the first time I've seen this behavior in Saudi Arabia, and I've also seen a lot of conversation on disability happening in Saudi Arabia. But I do feel there's a huge gap into what the books say, what the policies say, and what actual people with disabilities are experiencing. This is one another story that, of course, I'll say for another video. that i wrote about my wheelchair that happened a couple of years earlier when i'd gone to saudi arabia for umrah and that was also unfortunately a horrific um experience but anyways coming back to this year so finally i get in touch with nadia who's my organizer my helper from uh, asia foundation and she's helping me arrange all these um logistical matters and i'm also in touch with ikal who is the organizer from a uh, leap and and it's so remarkable to see this team work come together and they're trying to get me on a flight to leave saudi arabia they're like you just get out of saudi arabia we'll see what we have to do after that i said fine and then finally i got a flight to frankfurt on lufthansa and even with them there were a little complications with the wheelchair and that's also when i realized that it's actually not the company it's not the policy it's always the people and the culture of that country the same lufthansa team when i met them in frankfurt had a very different attitude towards disability they had a more accommodating comforting attitude but once i met the same company's crew in saudi arabia they had a questioning doubting attitude as if we're not sure we really want you on board but you've got the ticket we can't do anything about it and that's what makes the difference the policies don't work when you're on ground and you're faced with a challenge that you've never really experienced before or you're not ready for it and we don't need policies we don't need all these frameworks we just need a change in our attitudes we need to learn the importance of empathy and then that translates into our profession or whatever we're trying to do and makes a huge difference for people like myself and there are others like myself so this entire incident taught me that uh, yes a lot of work needs to be done when it comes to inclusion in saudi arabia number 2 we must be really really mindful about these local airlines policies sometimes they don't let you on board at all and that could really cause a huge dent in your budget or in your schedule luckily i had a good backing of nadia and of ecom and i was able to evacuate myself airlift myself out of the country but we must avoid these situations and we must try to look for better solutions so i hope this video is helpful and if you're planning a trip to the middle east please do your research first and let's exchange our notes as much as we can